Hey there, in this video, we are going to take a look at um, a review of slopes and intercepts. So in this video specifically, we're going to look at how do we take an equation that's given to us um, for any linear function and figure out what the slope and the y-intercept of that linear function is. So you can see down here we have this y equals mx plus b. Remember this is slope intercept form. So my suggestion to you in terms of what the most efficient method would be to figure out the slope and the y-intercept from any given linear equation would be to put it in this form, this y equals mx plus b. And then once it's in that form, meaning once y is isolated by itself, then you can find the slope by looking at the m, which is the number attached to the x or the coefficient on the x, and then look at the b to figure out the y-intercept. So the b value is going to tell us that y-intercept, and remember our y-intercept is always going to be um, 0 as the x value, and then b is your y value. So if you were graphing this, it would be on the y-axis. That b value would be on the y-axis, which makes it the y-intercept. And again, the slope would be what tells you um, the rate of change, how quickly that line changes from one value to another. So let's take a look at two examples. So the first example we see, 4x minus 2y equals 8. Um, this has a single x term, a single y term, and then a constant, the 8 here. We want to get it into slope-intercept form, y equals mx plus b. So in order to do that, we need to get y by itself. So to start to get y by itself, I'm going to highlight my y term. I want to move anything that's not highlighted to the other side. To do that, we do the inverse, we do the opposite. So 4x, I'm going to subtract 4x from both sides. And we do that because um, it is a positive 4x originally, the opposite of that to turn it into 0x, which makes it disappear. Um, that is going to be subtracting 4x. And then we have negative 2y on the left side equals, and then you can either write 8 minus 4x, or if you look at mx plus b, that right side of the slope-intercept form, we typically like to put our x term first and then our constant second. So you'll see that that's how I'm going to write it. So my x term is negative 4x, and then 8 is my constant. It's positive, so it's plus 8. Just a quick reminder, these are not like terms, so we cannot combine those together and make it 4x, for example, on the right side. Um, one has an x, one doesn't, so they are not like terms. Now my next step, because y is not totally by itself yet, we want to divide by negative 2 on both sides. Negative 2y divided by negative 2 is just 1y, or y, so we'll have y equals, and then we'll divide each of these terms by negative 2. So negative 4x divided by negative 2, if you think about that on its own, negative 4 divided by negative 2, first of all, negative divided by negative will be positive, and 4 divided by 2 is 2. So that gives me 2x when I do negative 4x divided by negative 2. So that's going to be 2x, and then 8 divided by negative 2. 8 divided by negative 2 is negative 4. And so 2x minus 4 is what we get on that right side. So now that we have it in slope-intercept form, which is that y equals 2x plus, I'm sorry, 2x minus 4, y equals mx plus b, we go ahead and we figure out our m, which is our slope, and our b, which is our y-intercept. So our m, our slope, is the number attached to or being multiplied by the x, so that would be a 2 here, and then negative 4, so it does include the sign in front of the constant, negative 4 is our b value, our y-intercept. If you ever have to write it as an ordered pair, it will be 0 comma b, so 0 comma negative 4. So that is our slope right here, and then our y-intercept over here. So let's go ahead and do the same thing for number 2. But as you can see on number 2, it's a little more complicated because we have y's on both sides, x's on both sides, and constants on both sides. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get my y's together. So I see I have y's on both sides. I'm going to go ahead and just subtract y here because that will cancel that y out. When I subtract it on one side, I need to do it to the other side as well. So 11y minus 1y gives me 10y. And then I still have minus 7x plus 4 equals and then 2x minus 8. So that's my first step. And my first suggestion is to figure out 
how you can get your whys together because once you have those together, then you can figure out what else needs to move to which side. So now I just have one y term, 10y. I need to get that by itself, which is how I know that negative 7x plus 4 needs to go to the other side. So negative 7x plus 4 needs to move, and to do that, we'll use inverse operations. Negative 7x, the opposite of that is positive 7x, so we're going to add 7x to both sides. And then either in the same step or in the next step, we can also go ahead and move that 4 by doing the opposite, subtracting 4 from both sides. So I'm going to subtract 4 from both sides as well. And you'll notice both of those terms cancel out on the left side. So we just have 10y on the left side equals, and then we'll have 2x plus 7x, which is 9x. Those are like terms, so we can combine them. And negative 8 minus 4 is minus 12 or negative 12. At that point, we still have to get y by itself. It has the 10 attached to it, so that's 10 times y. So we're going to divide by 10 on both sides. That way we can simplify the 10y over 10 uh, to just a y equals. And then just like on the last one, we're going to have to divide both terms by that 10. So 9x divided by 10 and negative 12 divided by 10. Now 9x divided by 10, 9 and 10 are not divisible by the same number. Um, so we can't simplify any further. So we're just gonna need it, leave it 9 over 10x. Technically you could leave the x on top of the fraction, but most times it is written after. That way when we get to finding the slope, it's a lot easier to just um, figure out what number is in front of that x. And then negative 12 over 10. So negative 12 divided by 10, those are both divisible by two. When you divide each of them by two, you get negative six on top and you get five on bottom. So minus six over five for our second um, part here, the constant. And then finally, just like on the last one, we're going to find the M and the B. M is going to be this 9 tenths because that's the number being multiplied by X. So that is our slope. And then B is going to be the constant with the sign. So negative six over five. And again, that is our Y intercept. And if you were asked, you would write that as an ordered pair um, by putting zero in the X spot and then B in the Y spot. So those are our slope and Y intercept values for number two. So in summary, um, we always want to get y by itself. And then um, once we have y by itself, then it will be in slope intercept form. This y equals mx plus b. And at that point, then you can go ahead and calculate the slope by finding the number or um, the coefficient of the x. So the number being multiplied by the x. And that number could be a whole number. It could be a fraction, but it is the slope. And then our B value is that um, constant value. Remember, it does include the sign. So if we had Y equals 2X minus 4, for example, like the one we had, then negative 4 was the B value, not just 4. So that is our, our um, value that tells us where the graph crosses the Y axis and therefore is our Y intercept. If needed to um, write it as an in or, or to write it as an ordered pair, we would write it as zero comma B, which would be um, zero comma whatever that Y intercept value is. So hopefully that helps a little bit and I hope you have a great rest of your day.